What's up, everyone? It's Chicks in the Office with Rhea and Fran giving you that Friday energy on a Wednesday. Hopefully, everyone had an amazing start to their week. We have a fun episode for everybody. Going to be talking a little bit about Bachelor in Paradise. We also have an amazing interview with Lake Bell that was so interesting, fascinating, a very different interview than we've ever done before, talking all about the voice and what makes it very fascinating. I think everyone will enjoy it very much and also very relaxing in my personal opinion. She has such a great voice to listen to, but hopefully everyone is having an amazing week. Like I said, our show in Boston is on Thursday, so if you're coming, uh, doors open at 6.30. The meet and greet is at 5.30. Yeah, I was going to say, important to note, meet and greet is before, yeah. and some people right. asking. Meet and greet is at 5.30, so make sure you get there uh, before 6.30. If you want to, if you bought tickets for the meet and greet, doors will open for general admission at 6.30. Show will start at 7.30. Make sure you guys are hitting the bar, getting some drinks in before the show. Maybe make your uh, signs. Make sure, yeah, you, make make your sure signs. you make your signs so that we uh, that segment goes as planned. Otherwise, it's going to be pretty awkward and we'll just fly right through it. But anyways, we're super excited. Headed to Boston tomorrow or well today when you're listening. So there's that. How's everyone doing today? I'm well. I'm a little tired because, like I said on Monday, when I said, oh, going to going to Philly, hope it doesn't get rained out. It got rained out. I made it all the way down there. I made it inside. That's so what I said to Joe. I was like, at least, because we were thinking about if we wanted to go to a bar before and then walk over. And I was like, you know what? It was around like, we got there around like 630. I was like, let's go in so that we can at least say like we went in, we can see the park, we can get a taste of the vibe just in case it does get canceled and we're just sitting at the bar we can say we and I'm glad we did because I left with the with the Capital One World Series scarf and a you got a souvenir and a uh, and a towel a red October towel that has wor- World Series on it so it's like a little memorabilia it's like I was there I'll have it I can you know I went to the, you were at made, the game that got rained out I went to the fake game 3 and yeah. once they announced that you know we got in had a beer, walked around, saw the the Fox broadcast. A Rod was like kind of asleep, I think. I don't know mm-hmm. if he was like meditating or what he was doing. Um, and then they canceled the game, and we left. Thankfully, we had some very great friends that we were with who were able to drive us back to the train station, or else we would have been in quite the predicament. Predicament. We would have been yeah. stuck there for hours. So we were able to get back on the train. Basically, just spent money on an, on a round trip Amtrak for, for Monday night. Unfortunately, everyone was like, oh, can't you just go Tuesday? The tickets, I we could only go Monday. That's That was the situation. We could only go Monday. Can't go any other day. When And, you know, Wednesday we leave for Boston. Now, can you believe? But Thursday night, Boston show, we're live on stage. There's a Phillies and Eagles game going on. Oh, boy. <laughs> All at the same time. That'll be really exciting. <laughs> um, I'm sorry for you. Very unfortunate circumstances. Yeah. yeah. Nobody wants to go through that. No, no. We laughed when we got home. And at the, at the end of the day, we were like, look, realistically, to get to Philly, game canceled everything. It was six hours. So it could have been way worse. Like you we could have left been there it all night. We left our apartment at four ish. Hey, we were back at like a little after ten. That's really not that bad. You could have gone to the game and they could have lost. They could have lost. They Which could have, would have been, I think, a more upsetting scenario. Yeah, I that would have been upsetting. Also, I was thinking too, like if they started the game and played like two or three innings, and then it's like nine nine thirty, and then they went into a rain delay, and then they waited until like eleven to be like, oh, we're not. The game's not coming back. Like mm-hmm. now it's then it, yeah. it's. It could have been. There could have been worse. <laughs> best case scenario for a canceled game. Yes, it was best case scenario for a canceled game. I do certainly wish I saw a game being played, but that is quite all right. Okay. I made it. The atmosphere was great for yeah. the 30 minutes I was there. Well, you can watch on TV tonight. Yes, that's is, what I will be doing. It's not the same, but yeah, that's, that's what okay. I will be doing. That's all it right. will be a Cutting Stems uh, recap on today's episode for Bachelor in Paradise. We're getting down to the closer and closer to the end here. We thought the finale was today. <laughs> like earlier in the earlier in the season, we thought the the show was supposed to end November 1st and then realized that they got all these more episodes. Oh, I got the hiccups. So it's not till November 22nd. That would have been nice if it was today. 
Yeah. I also, if you're watching on YouTube, we have a stunning charcuterie board in front of us because uh, we played trivia with a lovely uh, girl and her fiance, who charcuterie chick, if you follow yes. her on Instagram, Liv, she's amazing. She has a book out. She brought this for us. That's, That's awesome. going to be our trivia game for Monday. But just in case you're watching and you're like, who made that Damn, look board? At, look at Rian Fran with that really fall festive charcuterie board in front of them. <laughs> right. Not made by us, but we no, do appreciate it very but much. But it is stunning. So follow Charcuterie Chick, TikTok, Instagram. She's yeah, awesome. She's awesome. New book. That'll be on Monday. Did you guys watch The White Lotus? I never watched the first season. Ugh. Boring. I, would, I, would, I did watch the premiere. I'm very I saw a lot it. of articles about some full frontal, though. Uh, yeah, Theo James. Yeah. Full dick out. Uh, yeah. Shout out Theo. Theo James. <laughs> well, I haven't seen him in years. Divergent. Last Divergent. Great movie. Divergent. Was not <laughs> expecting his dick to be out in this show. Aubrey Plaza is in it, and she's playing a character that we have never seen her play before. Oh. I would take... In a good way? No. Her character is very hateable. Oh. But watching it, I was like, <clears throat> her character is somebody that sh one of her characters would hate. So I guess it makes sense why she's playing her because it her character is like very reserved. It's just different than her usual character. So I think maybe she wants to she wanted to expand. She wanted to play something different. Just not her usual vibe whatsoever. Yeah, and I love Aubrey Plaza. I think it's gonna be a really good season. It takes place in Sicily, which I think is really interesting. And I loved the first and they, they episode. They filmed in Sicily. Yes, that's, pretty, I, that's so cool loves the first episode i'm i'm in it you don't have to necessarily watch the first season to watch the second one right no but like I it's do, all different people it's all different people besides jennifer coolidge she's in right. the first and the second but same premise same premise just people on vacation I like it, it makes I gotta you appreciate it more if you know i gotta i have things. to watch you have to watch the first one's only like six, episodes, six episodes right and i don't you know just, what i'm doing like if, what do you have if you have nothing going on this weekend i know right? i know do it on the train just, tomorrow yeah watch it on the train oh that's actually a great idea i'll do that i will I'll re, download that i will re-watch it sitting next to you so yeah. we can watch it at the same time perfect you will fly by yeah and because i think the white lotus is a show where if i i said this last time if i watched the first season week to week i don't know how much i would have loved it I'll, although i did lo love the first episode of the second season so mm -hmm. maybe but i think watching it back to back to back straight through is the way to do it with this the the format of this show mm -hmm. i do think you should you they're totally different characters totally different settings same premise is so it you it's don't, week to week now right yeah, yeah so yeah. you don't need to watch the first season to watch the second but i do recommend watching the first because it'll make you excited to watch the second the first one's based in hawaii yep the four seasons yep I think it's the four seasons. And then the next one, Sicily. Got it. So highly recommend. I'm going to make you watch it on the train tomorrow. Yeah, I actually know. I'm next definitely. To you and I'm going to go, you better watch I'll that. download for sure. Yeah, I'm excited for this season. So that was, that's what I watched this week because uh, The Patient and Tommy Lies has come to an end. So, yeah. you know, that won't be a week, to, week thing anymore where I'm saying, oh my God, what's going on with this show? But maybe that'll happen with The White Lotus. Who it knows? Could. Who knows? I'm excited. All right. Let's get into today's topics. We are going to be talking about some rumors about Gabby mm. and Eric from The Bachelor. Are they together? Are they not together? There's some speculation around that. We are also Taylor Swift's on tour. She announced her tour on GMA. Yes. Very exciting. Taylor Swift going on tour and everybody's trying to get tickets. And then some very unfortunate news. Yeah. Rapper Takeoff has passed away which we will talk about. It's incredibly sad tragic, and yeah. very tragic. And then we have an awesome interview with Lake Bell, which I highly, highly, highly recommend listening to. I thought it was really fascinating, interesting, very different interview than, you know, we didn't, we talked a little bit about our movies, but just more, oh, sorry. What the hell was that? I don't know what that might computer. That sounded really lovely though. It sounded like um, you want I something. was getting through to finally put my email in for the, Oh Swift. shit! Okay, I finally got in. Wow! I was oh gonna my say that. God. It sounded that was like a great noise. That sounded like good news. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So listen, listen to the Lake Bell interview. I thought it was really fascinating, and I think uh, if you're listening to this podcast, it's a great listen, talking all about the voice. And then we have the Cutting Stems Bachelor in Paradise recap. So let's get into it, talking about Gabby and Eric. There's been speculation about Gabby and Eric and where they stand as a couple. They haven't posted together in a little bit. And Gabby has uh, not been seen wearing her ring. I do, when I first saw this, I'm a little hesitant when somebody says, you know, they haven't posted together in a while. Just as two people who don't post their significant others all the time. Yeah. You know, we could go 
weeks at a time, but we're still together. And yeah. so when people start saying, oh, you haven't posted, I'm like, that's so ridiculous just because I haven't posted. But when it comes to people who do post all the time, I think that's when the speculation comes because people are like, they're the they're the type of couple to post all the time. So why aren't why haven't they been posting? Um, and she wasn't wearing her ring. And so that caused a lot of speculation. And then Gabby made a comment after the show last night that I think alluded to the fact that they may be breaking up. She said that they, you know, they're busy. They're they're focusing yeah. on other things. I can read it. She was asked um, about her relationship, that they were still together. She said, life is just really busy for the both of us right now. So I understand their concern, but we're just kind of, you know, going forward with each of our individual interests and supporting each other from afar. Supporting each other from afar is where it's like, okay, because he has been, or at least he was, going to the shows, the Dance With Us Star shows, and he hasn't been going recently. And I think the last couple of weeks, she, like you said, she hasn't been wearing her engagement ring. So that, like... I, I'm not going to lie. I noticed I was watching uh, I was watching Dancing with the Stars on my train ride back to New York City. <laughs> and it did pop in my head after she danced that she wasn't wearing her ring. I noticed it on her hand. But then I was like, well, you're dancing. You know, right. it's a big ring. Like maybe you're not like mm -hmm. some people don't exercise with their engagement yeah. rings on, thing, same things like that. So I didn't really think too much about it. But then I saw this and was like, ooh, maybe... That answer is what threw me more. It's like right. supporting each other from afar. Weird answer. Sounds like distance is happening. Break of some sort. Yeah. That's a weird answer because if they asked if they're still together and you were, you'd be like, yeah, of course, he's just, you know, busy right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it, it was a, a strange answer. Maybe they're just feeling it out right now and they will end up together and they don't want to outright say that they broke up because they're trying to figure it out. Maybe... She's just been really busy with Dancing with the Stars and other things and, you know, trying to find the time with your partner at that time probably is hard because Dancing with the Stars is a grueling process. Grueling. Lots of practice and they're so in it. So. Yeah. And for all those like very uh, invested Dancing with the Stars people, there's always been like a little bit of speculation about Val's, Val and Val's partners because... You know, Val's a hot guy, and it gets he, steamy. And it gets steamy, but he is married, and his um, wife was Jenna is amazing. Her. Yeah, and that's why, like, it was like, oh, like bring Jenna in to like make people stop talking about their chemistry and whatever. But that's been rumors about his him and his partner have been going on for so long. Uh, Rumor Willis was a big one that everybody really talked about, and so I feel like that just comes with the territory and. She, he actually tested positive for COVID, so he couldn't dance last night. She danced with Alan, and she was still they were still great, but um, she and Val are really, really good. And I feel like you're when you're training for Dancing with the Stars, you're just in this go, go, go mindset. Like, you're really practicing and training all these things. So and Eric just seems to be kind of living his, living his life, a little care, carefree. <laughs> at this point so i don't know just it right. feels like maybe I mean, there is just a little bit of a of a of a pause happening are we shocked by any sort of breakup or break between no. any batch at the, no at this point it is what it is it's gonna happen we see it happen time and time again yeah and we'll just have to see what happens in the future i'm sure we will get some sort of statement yeah. in the upcoming weeks of whether they are together or not together. i agree also guys so a quick dance with the stars what well, people gotta be but why are People are not voting for Heidi. And I don't understand. She's so good. She's like closer to the top of the leaderboard than most. She gets great scores. She's been on the bottom two twice now. Saved twice by the judges. Um, this time they saved her. This is like the controversy, right? You know I always talk about this. Four judges. If it's split two and two, whoever Len picks is just the one that's saved. Really? Because he's the head judge. Okay. So... It was Heidi and Jordan Sparks were in the bottom two. And two voted for Jordan, two voted for Len. I mean, for Heidi. Len voted for Heidi, so Heidi stays, even though it's Shit. split 2-2. Two, two. They were using all their votes on Charlie. I, so they got to yeah. start splitting them between Charlie and I, Heidi. I think Heidi is so good. And, like, I no offense to, to Vinny, like, good for him that he's made it this far. He's just... 
Vinny's got that he's, big Italian fan he's just family. Not that good, but getting boy, everyone. does he got he has people voting for him. Really, he's got, he hasn't been in the bottom two once. Friend, he's got that big Italian family. I know. I know what it's like. Your family's calling your family members to call the other people that Everybody's, they know. They're so calling many, everybody they know. The Jersey they know. Shore community is going hard for Vinny because he has consistently been at the bottom and he has of this leaderboard and he has not been in the bottom two once. I'm so. telling you. Yeah, the family's going hard. It is. And what was my last dance with the stars comment? Oh, the chemistry between Trevor and Emma, off the charts. Um, off People the charts. are rooting for them, right, as yeah. a couple? Yeah, I think so. I'm not, I don't really, like, read too much about what people are saying about the show. I just like to watch Make your own opinion. vote myself mm -hmm. and move on from it. But I, I see some chemistry. Maybe some people know more than I do, but I, I feel the chemistry. It's hot. Hot and heavy. Yeah, and that's all I have to say. <laughs> like we said in the intro, guys, Taylor Swift, she's going back on tour. Concerts are back. We are trying to get to as many as possible. You guys know I love concerts, and when I'm going to concerts, Game Time is the ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last-minute deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows, and they guarantee the lowest price. It is going to be a, a, a tough go. For, you know, Taylor Swift announcing this tour. I think, you know, tickets are going to be flying off the shelves, which is why game time is a great way to make sure that you are still at these events because they have amazing deals. It's easy to use. You're going to, uh, you're going to love it. We've been using game time all year. We got to go to some really cool events. We went to US Open. Uh, I was just at a Demi Lovato show, all thanks to game time. Tons of Barcel fans have been using it, letting us know about the great deals that they are getting. So you can download the Game Time app. You can go to the account tab to create a login and redeem code CHICKS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. So guys, when things start to get crazy, you can look for those Taylor Swift tickets on Game Time. Download Game Time, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Taylor Swift announced that she is going on tour. Obviously, this is a hot ticket to get. Yeah. And you guys know that we love Game Time. So if you're looking to get Taylor Swift tickets in the future, make sure you're using Game Time. Use code STOOL to get $20 off and get yourself some Taylor Swift yeah. tickets because this is the perfect time to use Game Time. This is also not an ad. I'm just saying it because we love Game Time. We use it all the time. And yeah. no better way to use it. But we also just said it in the ad yeah. before this time. Before this true, topic. True. <laughs> this part is but, not part yes. of the ad. But uh, I just think that that's a great way to get your tickets for Taylor Swift and everybody's going to be wanting to yeah. go to this tour. Look, I'm it's been a while. I'm exhausted. Right? Since she's been on tour? Y years. Years. Since Reputation. Lover Fest never happened. Right. So I'm exhausting all options here. I hope it works with game time. I, I think it will. I think everybody should try and use game time. Um, but, you know, when you're, like I said, Bleep Master has the monopoly, their big oil. And they have the pre-sale, all those things are going on. I just signed that ding you guys heard in the in the intro was me waiting like five hours to get through just to put my email in to register for the verified fan pre-sale. So come what's the phrase? Come higher come high water, come lower high water. Hell or high water. Hell or high water. Come hell or high water. I don't know. Is that know. the correct phrase know. for this? I, thought I don't it was know. Come one, come all. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just trying to say whatever it takes. I'll be getting tickets. There's no way I'm at not all going. costs. At all costs, it's a I big will. Stadium, yeah. you'll get tickets. I will. Yeah, pff, you, I mean, you're gonna get tickets. You've been stressing me out all morning. The way know, that you're talking about not getting tickets, it's freaking me out. You're gonna fucking it's get tickets. It's making me nervous. But what are you getting nervous about? It's a fucking concert. You're gonna get to go. <laughs> well, I just don't want to have to spend nine million dollars. But we'll see. I know, I, anyway. but a lot of people will spend that money yes. to go see their favorite. No, artists. I, I will. I will. I will dish out the big what's, bucks for what's sure. What's the max amount you would pay to go to see Taylor Swift? I think I would be willing to max go like eight hundred dollars. Oh my god! If you're gonna go eight hundred, you gotta push it to a thousand each. But I was gonna say a ticket, not eight. total, like for myself. That's way higher than I thought you would say. Well, this is the thing: she released pricing, and there is like VIP packages. So if there's like a if there's like a meet and greet situation for those will probably be like for eight ninety nine. That's the highest price is eight ninety nine. I mean, but like. 
when they're on resale, they're going to be like 10 grand. Okay. They don't go on resale that much. They like people buy them and then they don't resell them <laughs> as much. As far as my experience goes, when it comes to buying VIP and like meet and greet stuff, I would, I would buy, I would pay for that for a, for a Taylor Swift meet and greet and VIP ticket, whatever that entails. How are meet and greets? Cause you've done them. Like, cause I've thought about, I've thought about it with John Mayer cause I've, he used to do that. And I was like, would it be worth it to like talk to him for a second? Um, the Jonas Brothers, when we did, I did it for the Jonas Brothers. That was very worth it because they were very nice and Well, chatty talking and, about the fact that if meet and greets are worth, no, no, I, worth they, it when we're doing no, no, meet and greet. Yeah. Right, but obviously yours is way different. Yours are <laughs> like hanging out. I feel like this, it's like you're being shuffled. Well, yeah, I mean, Justin Bieber, like I would say it wasn't worth it. Like I have the picture, but like he didn't open his mouth. Like, yeah, just, oh, he, really? He I don't think he even well, said like one picture. word. That's what I'm saying. Like. Obviously, you're meeting great. You're like, it was worth out. it because yeah. I did with that came second row seats. And so, like, that was awesome. Mm-hmm. So, if you get like a really good seat out of it, too, then yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And you have the picture. Yeah. But Justin was not very chatty at the time. I think that was, that was a, hey, he was going through something. Yeah. It was a darker time, <laughs> Bel- <laughs> late in the Believe Tour. But Taylor is, it's a stadium tour. She has a lot of great special guests. Honestly, she has Paramore opening for her in the for the first show in Arizona and I think that's the only one they're doing which is pretty cool that is really cool um Phoebe Bridgers Ham Heim did Olivia Rodrigo did Olivia Rodrigo say no or something like that I don't know I guess she's not on here so I don't that's kind of crazy because I feel like even for stadium tours it's worth it because it's like when else you're gonna get the opportunity I mean yeah. maybe one day Olivia Rodrigo is at that level but like to play to a stadium. I'm not exactly sure if she said no, but I feel like I heard rumblings. I think of, there was rumors. There were rumors that she said no to do a Lipa's tour because oh. she wanted because of Taylor Swift, maybe opening for Taylor Swift. But I also feel like there was like Olivia would post about Taylor Swift all the time. She hasn't in so long. I feel like I don't know. Maybe something happened. I, don't I saw know. people kind of speculating about that, but. Yeah. I saw people being like, Olivia's trying to distance herself, so she's like her own artist. But Yeah, I don't know. Also, um, Biba Doobie, I don't know if I am mm-hmm. pronouncing her name properly. She's awesome. She's like alt-rock. She's a, She came out with a new album recently. It's very, very good. I, I, um, I like her stuff a lot. She's, she's doing Tampa, Houston, and Atlanta. It's funny because there's a, there's one one two, excluding Paramore because they're just doing one show one two three four five six seven eight, eight people, that are or groups going on tour with her and everybody has like four or five stops. That's cool. It That's is very different. cool. I feel like usually it's just one. Yeah. One opener. Exactly. I, I so know like. I always ask, but is Taylor Swift the type to bring out guests like unannounced? She she has. Yeah, I feel like. Reputation tour. She did. Um, I don't know if she would. I mean, God, there's just not enough time in a People set at this point. People would go crazy if point. she brought out like Olivia Rodrigo. So, there's just something. like she. The, it's called the Eras tour. Like she's got a lot of she's got a lot of eras to cover when it comes to songs. Yeah. Like she can't be having. There's no time to have some guests come and out also, and sing their song. It's been so long since she had a tour that she's probably like, I want this to be my tour. Yeah. Not in a not in an evil way in the way I just said it, but like a, she wants all the time she can. Exactly. So, Godspeed. To everyone out there trying to get tickets, I know the pre-sale is happening in a couple weeks, but fear not, because game time will be there if things don't work out the first time around, and I have faith in that working As for, do I. for all. Tuesday morning, we woke up to absolutely awful news. TMZ first reported that takeoff from the group Migos, who we all know, had been shot and killed in Houston. Absolutely terrible. It's an awful story. I think it happened around like 2.30 in the morning. They were at a bowling alley or outside a bowling alley and an argument fight had broken out. Multiple people were shot. People were taken to the hospital. Um, But takeoff, I believe, was fatally shot in the head, which is really absolutely terrible and frightening. Like, And I know... I know TMZ is in the business of doing what they do, but when I clicked on that TMZ article and like there's a straight up video or yeah. pictures and the, his they have him kind of blurred, but it's like Quavo over his body. It's it's 
crazy to me that that's just something that can be put on the internet. Right, because you like their family members could just see that immediately and like and a lot of times people don't want to see that, especially somebody in your family. Yeah, I think that's crazy. Also, crazy. the emergency calls are always put out there yeah. and it just feels really sad and really dark just and just as, like, awful. Just like warning, and graphic was, video. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. That they can just put that online? It's just awful and he was so young, only 28 years old. Really just just in, insane just yeah. really crazy that that could just happen like that and they have the they have the 911 call to her emergency audio also yeah i just said that yeah yes yes i know it's just but it's like all it's all mm -hmm. just like linked one after the other um so yes it was either they said either in the head or near his head but he was pronounced dead at the scene um he was with quavo they are uncle Yes. And nephew. Takeoff is Quavo's nephew. Quavo's nephew. He was 28 years old. So awful. Extremely young. They were just working on, I saw they were just working on music together. Unk and Few, they were calling it. Right. Well, because themselves. Migos. They broke up. They yeah. broke up. But Quavo and Takeoff were doing right. stuff together. So without offset. Yeah. Yeah. But that is just, like I said, we've said it a million times. It's just awful, really tragic and, you know prayers and condolences to yeah. their God. family and their friends and everyone around them because it is just something that you do not expect to happen like that yeah. and also just like they were just having a, a fun night yeah so they were just playing dice apparently right. and then and a fight broke out and somebody yep. started shooting people awful it's really really awful and and sad and that is just worst nightmare situation Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Cutting Stems, the after show. It's me, Fran. It's him, Trent. It's her, Kelly. And yeah, we're back. We are back. Very excited to be here. Yep. Um, the three. I thought you were about to say, it's oh. me, Fran, and Trent. Like, I thought you were going to. Yeah. The right big <laughs> three. All right. We got some explaining to do. We got a right, couple guys. things that we got to explain. Number one, we're okay. pre recording. Yeah, I, there's yeah. a lot going on. Right. In the office, there's sports. Mm -hmm. There's the fact that uh, four, three, four, actually almost all of us are going to Boston for our live show on Thursday. There's a lot to get done, a lot to prepare for. So we need our, we need some time on Tuesday night. So we are pre-recording. We're lucky enough to get screeners. We, they do give us paradise screeners, which yeah. is an absolute blessing. It's a new thing. Yes, Bachelor, it's Bachelorette, great. Bachelorette, they're way tighter on those they ones. They are. Yeah, no, no, no. But that, paradise, paradise, they let us let us go paradise wild. Paradise, we can watch. Um, somebody didn't watch all the screeners, so she's got lots to say. She's out. Um, but <laughs> also nothing to say at the same time. No. <laughs> Oh, no, it caught it. It caught it. I saw it. Come I saw on. it. Come on. <laughs> Come on now. Um, so she's here. Yeah. Come on. Now. Sometimes we have. She's here in spirit, literally. All, <laughs> all transparency. Um, we've pre-recorded before, and people have picked up on it, but we just haven't admitted to it. Yeah. We do it pretty rarely. Yeah. Usually yeah. we're here we're, super late. Yeah. Most of the time we are totally live. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Even with the screeners, it actually helps a lot with recording the podcast. Right. When Trent is available. So that we don't have to record the podcast at 11 p.m. That's right. right. So it helps in that situation as well. Yeah. But we are here. We are going to talk about Monday and Tuesday's episode of Bachelor in Paradise. We're getting down to like the nitty gritty where the couples are really trying to see if they work. The switch is over. Everybody's been coupled up. Monday actually started with uh, Sarah left. I, she had a family emergency. Not sure what happened there, but she's yeah. gone. Yep. They right. glossed over that really quickly. They did. So hope, and hope all is well. There was a rose ceremony where the big issue was who's Victoria going to pick? Mm -hmm. Is it going to be Johnny? Is it going to be Alex? Um, she picks Johnny, but Florence picks Alex yes. instead of her Australian counterpart, Adam. Mm -hmm. So he gets sent home and Alex gets to say, which Johnny was not happy about. There is not a chance in hell that that was Florence's decision. Correct. There's just yeah, no. no fucking way. When I, when I, uh, when Florence Victoria, is just like along for the ride and I think completely. she'll, she's down to do whatever she's asked. Right. Agreed. She, um, when 
Victoria ended up picking Johnny. I was like, the only girl left is Florence. Florence isn't really tied to anybody. She should pick Adam because he's sweet and cool and he deserves to stay. And like, I just, I, you know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm raising my flag for him all the time. I think he's amazing. Kelly loves Adam I love him. from yeah. the one time he was drinking wine with the girls. He was drinking wine and, and gossiping. And he called it a wine and chat. Just, and he called it a wine chat. And he was and just being really and sweet. And it just, just, I was like, what a, what a lovely guy. so like, in on him nobody now. Nobody wants to talk to him. Nobody, like, how are people not fawning over this man? Like, I don't get it. He just, he has like, at first it was like, oh, well, he's just hot. And like, you know, Chris Hemsworth's body double. Whatever. And then after that, it's like the chat thing. But um, I think it's fucked up. And uh, I think that Alex and Florence are never even going to speak to each other. So never. What, what's the point? That was the rose ceremony. Uh, Victoria gets a date. It is, it is funny to see who gets so many dates. You yeah. know? Right. Like Victoria, this is Victoria's like third date. Shanae's She's been on nine million on dates. dates. Logan's <laughs> yeah. been on a ton of dates. Like, mm -hmm. so there's so. Certain people get so many dates, it's crazy that they like just want to push those relationships or the drama so much. So mm -hmm. Johnny and Victoria get a date. They're basically in this, you know, cleansing, spiritual Their date was ceremony weird. of sorts. Yeah. I don't even really yeah. know what to describe it. Their date was like the more spiritual version of uh, Jacob and Jill. Yeah, date. yeah, yeah. That the was naked, just like, take your nakedness. clothes off and, and sort of be sexy. And this one was like... All, take not all of your clothes, but like, you know, I'm going to light a lot of incense and figure it out. Yeah. You know, yeah. like it was kind of bizarre. Yeah, it was. Definitely. So not very sexy. Yeah. Anything. And Johnny was def definitely not that into it at first. Mm -hmm. He was just kind of repeating everything Victoria was saying. Victoria was saying she really actually likes dates like this. So that took a while to get into. Johnny did reveal that he is afraid he isn't good enough for her. Which she basically told him that he wasn't. Fair, so fair I fear. understand. All that all that fair checklist fear. talk. I don't know how yeah. many. Yeah, exactly. I that would make many. me feel that way as well. Same, same. She's like, well, Alex is handsome and successful and older and yeah. all these things, and then there's and older. You. And we've already <laughs> talked about getting married and wanting kids, and yeah. we have never talked about that before. Like yeah. she she made it clear. And Johnny's like, I don't know everybody. if I'm there yet. Yeah. I like yeah. Johnny a lot. I don't. I don't. You know. Do you do you think that he's got what Victoria needs? No. Yeah. I'm not at all. Yeah, I, I don't. Th I don't necessarily think so either. And that's not a, that's not a knock on Victoria. I think that Victoria is is thinking clearly about her future, and she yeah. wants a certain kind of life. And there's you know, a lot of drama that's going to go away down. The life that you want for for true love on the beach. You know what I mean? I like wonder if they're filming a live worth it. a live show reunion show. Yeah. I hope that they do because. In the last like week or so, there's been some mm -hmm. kind of some crazy shit that's been going down, especially with Victoria. I don't know if I've this is where I fall in like a weird like spoilers type thing where it's yeah. like, do you want to talk about it? Because it does definitely ruin stuff from the show, sure, I guess. Sure, so sure. I, I won't, but probably not, you've probably yeah. seen it. I haven't if you're seen watching. any of it. Okay, I haven't so seen then it I won't ruin it for okay, you. Great. I, I haven't like, seen it either. Wow. Okay, great. I won't ruin it for, for either of you guys. Right. Okay. Um <laughs> this <laughs> this Next part is was maybe my least favorite thing that they've done this season, yeah. producer wise. I think that they're creating a lot of not necessarily fake drama because it does make drama, yeah. but it's just causing issues and they're doing it to people that don't deserve it. Like Eliza and Rodney had a uh, good relationship going, mm -hmm. it was solid, they were really getting to know each other, good connection. They just decide to let Justin come back. That he was, was already stupid. sent home. Fucking stupid. I have no. You don't get to just come back. Justin's like, oh well, I knew you were here, and I I wanted to come back, so they just let him it's come back. Insane. I have notes literally that says, "Ew, Justin is back." Like, what the <laughs> fuck? I know like, exactly. I don't understand why. It's bullshit. Also, also speaking of, of fake drama in the same vein, we'll talk about it in a second. Uh, did you guys notice when they were finally? It was right after the rose ceremony. They were all kind of hanging out, or maybe right before. I forget. And they were all talking, and the new girls and the old girls were all in a battle about, like, who made a mess of the yeah. room. And they just kept all basically calling each other messes and being like, the resort at Wells is like, the resort has never, you know, seen a room right, so messy. Never been like, they're, they're just like, it's, it's getting weird and catty. It's like, what are we talking about here? Is that me? Yeah, it is you. Oh. So you old popular. Man with Who your keeps their on? sound on? All right, I don't know. I don't know how it happened. That was crazy. I'm sorry. I anyway, haven't heard a, I haven't heard an old school God. text ding. In Me neither. And it years. vibrated as well. That really like, did make Ugh. me feel old. Uh, I apologize yeah, yeah, for yeah. that. 
Um, but yeah, so I don't know what the fake with yeah. like why they're they're going so far as to stretch this fake drama that they're um, that they're just like saying you know call each other messy, pitch all the girls yeah. against each other, and then they bring Justin back. It makes to it come across very inauthentic. Else. Right, and we talk a lot about like the rules are there are no rules, but yeah. I don't. I only agree with that when it's the person's decision. Like I don't think mm -hmm. Justin yeah. was like I got to get back on the beach. No. Like I gotta get he back. He might have. I but I don't Eliza, think so. Yeah. Maybe, but I really think they were like, "Hey, if you want to come back, you can." Eliza's down there. We know that you yeah. like her. Get back down there. I don't like when it feels so producer yeah. forced. Yeah, is totally. What I don't like. I've got uh, a lot to say about Eliza though. After this situation. Yeah. Look, it was very unfortunate what happened. I I think Eliza's very sweet. Mm -hmm. I think she. Oh, I will. I will. I, yeah. I think she um, clearly. Likes the attention. And yes. Thank you, Fran. That's exactly what yeah, she likes. Yeah, and I am a... I'm a... I really don't like the... Well, if you told me not to go, I wouldn't go. That, was, yes. that That's, drives me nuts. Yes. Like, you're your own person. If you don't want to go on the date, mm -hmm. don't go on the date. Like, mm -hmm. don't right. put your fate in the hands of this guy who you like and to be like... Well, he didn't tell me not to go, so now I'm going. It's it's insane. If you want to go, go. If you don't want to go, don't that go. But me, don't blame it on Rodney for not telling yes, you not to go. Completely. That mm. to me, first of all, first of all, her her face and excitement when Justin was there, and he she like barely knows she Justin, right? Like she barely knows him. She's like, oh, what's this? What's happening? He comes talk to her, and he's like, listen, I came back only for you. And she was basically like, what? Oh my <laughs> god, for me? Like she like yeah. lost her fucking mind that somebody came back to the beach for her, not even thinking for a second. Like, hey, this is probably also a good storyline. He's not like losing sleep over you, Eliza, but yeah. whatever. So she's obviously losing her mind over that. She has a conversation with Rodney. She says the the line of like, I wanted him to like know that he know what he wants me to do and I want him to tell me that he doesn't want me to go on this date because I need him to show me that he cares enough to like be upset if I go on this date. No. And then and then in that same situation, another situation later on as well, Kate, does it, too. Kate yeah. does it too. Yeah. And they're saying it in the way of like they uh, you know, I need a man who tells me what he wants. Like they're making it like it's their problem. Yeah. No, bitches, it's your problem. You can't you Just have make to make the decision for yourself. You make the decision for yourself. You also have to Take into account that on the flip side, as Rodney or as uh, Logan, whatever, like later with Kate, the situation is that they are they look bad if they say no, I don't want you on the date. Then it looks controlling. Then it looks yeah. crazy. We're in paradise. We're on. Yep. We're having this experience. We're doing whatever. Everybody's doing whatever they want to. It's all up to you. Do not rely on these other people. And then like backtrack on your uh, your love for them or the things you like about them because all of a sudden they're not like man enough for you. That was so fucked. No, I hated it. I couldn't believe that it kept happening and I could not believe that it came out of Eliza. I could not believe that. I read her so wrong. So wrong. That was perfect. I thought we were going to disagree on those. I thought... No, that was... I, I was upset. Because as I was, like, I was watching with watching? Eliza and Kate, I was thinking as they were yelling at the men to be like, you have to fight for me. Mm -mm. The other side of it is you could have nipped it in the bud and then made the guys feel better being like, no, no, I'm with Rodney or I'm Completely. with Logan. And then, yeah, to then blame the guys for them not being aggressive enough. And it's like what you guys are saying. If they had done that and done it in a way that maybe gets cut wrong or their tone isn't right on perfect, people would be like, these guys are controlling these women right. and they're not letting them go on dates yeah. in paradise. So right. I completely agree you don't need, with everything you don't need you're someone's saying. Permission. Yeah, and it's reassuring for both people in a couple. If Eliza was just like, actually, you know what? No, making a good connection with Rodney. Um, that would make Rodney feel good. But then 100%. Rodney would also be like, he'd be so... Eliza would see how happy... He was at her making that decision, and it would have, I think, it would have been good for them. However, maybe she did want to go on the date. Maybe it was another kind of situation where it was like, hey, Justin's coming back down. Justin, we got, hopefully he gets this date or... But if you uh, want to, if you're Eliza and you want to go on that date, then you can't get mad at Rodney for not standing up and saying, I don't want you to go on that date. Right, and by the way, watching her talk to Justin, she want like... Very much she was seemed like she wanted to, to go, go on right. that date. She's dying to go so on the date. For and what bothered me too. To him being like, well, if, Rodney, if you told me no, I wouldn't go. Well, then 
she, I feel like she would have been, she would have held that against him. Completely. Yep. And that's the whole point. It's like you can't, none of these people can tell them Which is what whether Rodney or not. Said. Right. Yeah. Tell them whether or not they should go on the date or not. Like that's never worked ever in paradise or in life. That doesn't work when you want to do something and you're kind of bringing it up to your significant other. Like, hey, I'm kind of curious about this. Like, what are your thoughts? Yeah. Their response should always be, do whatever you feel like you need to do. I'm here to support you either way. That's, that's right. That's the response. Yeah. I don't understand how that got lost in the sauce somewhere with Eliza. I also think that uh, the way that she was talking to Rodney and when he was like, uh, you know, you do whatever you need to do. Like, I, you know, obviously I don't want you to go, but like whatever. And then she was like, and then he was, uh, she said something along the lines of like, if you didn't want me to go, then why aren't you saying it? Like kind of got mad at him about it. And he like started laughing, being like, of course I don't want you to go. And she was like, it's just not funny. I'm like, he's laughing because you're being absurd. He's obviously obsessed with you. He doesn't want you to go on this date, but he's not going to sit here and be like, please, please don't go on the date and yeah. look like a fucking, you know, yeah, and exactly. then have you make kissy faces at Justin behind his back the rest of the time you're in paradise. Yeah. I do think, Spitting. I do you're think, fire right yeah, now. I'm <laughs> really, you're doing I'm, great. I've been riled up. Like I, 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 said, I, since I watched with this. every single thing yeah. you said. I do think up. Rodney maybe takes into consideration too much of like how he's the public Mr. Nice Guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which I does I do That's think fair. comes into play sometimes. But in this scenario, I think it was Andrew who said it. He was like, look, Rodney is the guy. He deserves like a mm -hmm. good relationship. He is ready for commitment and love. Like Justin is kind of like a shiny new toy. Like I don't really know if he's there yes. in that space yet. So for Rodney, it's sad. And Everybody loves Rodney. I wrote this down. This is my favorite line. Brandon, like, nobody is a better hype man than Brandon, whether it's for Serene or his friends. Like, <laughs> yeah. they're sitting on the beach. Rodney's sad. They're out on this date. And Brandon said to Rodney, he was like, if I was a woman, I'd, I'd be in your arms right now, bro. <laughs> He's like, bro, I'd be in your arms right now. Like, He's romantic he's to everybody. So, like, he, he really I, like, I love you, Brandon. Good, he's such it's a good so guy. cute. He was trying to make Ronnie feel better. <laughs> they were cutting back yeah. and forth to that and like Justin and Eliza making out on their date. So. It was so insane. Oh, that made me sad too when Rodney said he, I, I wrote it down because it, it like touched my soul. Roddy was like, if they kiss like we kiss, and if they hug like we hug, like, of course it's going to hurt my feelings. I was oh. like, oh, I know. he's so in love with her. Like, that is love. Th those are the things you think yeah. of when you are, like, in love with someone. I know. I so just, sad. it was, Poor and I think Angel. maybe Rodney was maybe worried that he was, could have been a scenario where he was more worried that she was not as into it as he was. For so sure. it's like, hey, For let's sure. go through this test. Let's see what happens. Uh, Tuesday, Hayden comes down. Mm -hmm. Oh. Boy, I wrote, did I not I wrote, miss oh Hayden. Oh, boy, Hayden is here. <laughs> I, like, did not miss Hayden I one iota. Hayden. Um, I really he, don't like it. He, uh, I know. He, he comes down during the, the... They're all at the fire pit. He's pulling a bunch of girls to talk to them. Uh, allegedly, this guy has paid six figures for Rambo's surgery. I think the number goes up every time. I know. Talk. Tyler talks. said 80K. Yep. Then they're throwing around six figs. Yep, yep, I don't yep. know. He paid a lot of money for this dog. I right. do like, um, I do kind of like though the shift that like the show has taken. Like n nobody's kind of, nobody's afraid to talk shit about his weird obsession with the dog. Anyway. Yes. No, and, and usually and people don't touch that. People you are like, know right. it's, well dogs are dogs and I'll pay, I'll do whatever. But I, no, I it's edited so crazy that everyone was like, I mean, I like dogs, but Jesus Christ. Like, yeah, what are and it's, doing it's here? edited to control. <laughs> It's edited to put every conversation he has about Rambo into the show. Sure, like yeah. anytime you mentioned Rambo, we saw it. Yep. <laughs> Florence called him out for sweating so much, which was very funny. <laughs> Love that. Um, he pulls Kate and takes, decides to ask Kate on the date. She says yes in kind of the same scenario of like, oh, well, if Logan told me not to go, I wouldn't go, but I'm going to go on the date. So stupid. I don't really like Kate either. I'm yeah. I'm no, out. We're, no, we don't out. like Kate. I'm yeah, out she's Kate. just all over the place. No, we don't like she's Kate. Too, and I especially like... don't like that in the preview, mm -mm. did you see her mention? She was like, well, yep. you know, Logan's kind of like this go with the flow, like guy, Cali guy. Hayden seems like he's got a lot of money. Oh, fuck that. Like literally Hayden and fuck Kate that. deserve each other. Yeah. If they yeah, want to do that, they can go ahead and do it. Absolutely. Kate is yeah. just like, to me, she just, she thinks that she's controlling the chessboard and she kind of sort of is, but it's with like bad intentions. Like she is the, the she is the shining exam example of I'm not there for the right reasons. Like right. she is not totally. there. Totally. And you for know what right she also said that off. really annoyed me too. She said, going on the date with Hayden, she was like, I do believe people can change. And I was like, Kate, two weeks ago, yep. you were saying Shanae's the same Shanae. She can't change. Yep. Yep. You know, they, they don't change their stripes, like exactly. the whole thing. I was like, okay, so which one is it? Now you'll go so you can go on the date. Yep. Um, and that is when Hayden said it was six figs 
for uh, for Rambo. It is making me think now, though, by that possibly he, a year to two years, which is a dark thought, but that he uses Rambo's not, surgery to brag about how much money he totally. has. Totally, that's facts. Totally. That's facts. It's to brag about how much money he has, and it's also to like show what a good, it, like what a good guy he is. Yeah, to be it's like, a, oh, I love what's up. What what's up? What? Taylor Swift's uh, another did, one. Did, he did, just did, showed did. up. My my narcissism, my disguise is altruism. Yeah, that's what Hayden is yeah. up to right now. Yep. And just on sorry. top of that, here he is leaving the dog again. Again. Again, he's this left dog, his dog. This he dog has this dog. precious time. <laughs> so it's, he keeps it's saying. It's so limited. And he will, he's he wheels just like out Rambo. that dog when he needs Rambo. Like he, he keeps really, talking like, about oh, I need, uh, psh, the I need limited a more time sympathy. he has. Bring out Rambo. Like, and he what keeps the fuck? leaving this dog to go on reality right, TV. One of these times he is going to bring Rambo. And that then people are not going to like that. Yeah, no. No, people I'm not, not going to like it. I won't like it. He's going to bring him to like the reunion or something yeah. stupid and like and you're right. I'm not going to like that either. I already don't like how he talks about Rambo, how he treats Rambo. Like if Rambo knew how advantage of he was being taken, like I just it, be like, "Hey, it save would your money, me. pal." Yeah, yeah. Save <laughs> I, your money. I'd rather see myself out, sir. Yeah. Like that's that's how Rambo <laughs> feels and I know that. I also <laughs> didn't I Kate like started to think that he she started to be like, oh, maybe this is the Hayden that they're all talking about. Yeah. He said that he really did believe that Gabby and Rachel were there for the wrong reasons. It was like, all right, dude. Shut up. Shut up. And then up. even during the Kate, uh, their date, she was watching him do the zip line. And she's like, this uh, guy is not for me. He's kind yeah, of a baby. No. Yeah, it she was, like, hates him. I know. But, she hates him. But she, but for some reason, she's she's like hanging out still. I don't, I don't know. Or entertaining yeah. it. These two are, I can't stand these two. So Justin, Rodney, and Eliza are deep in their love triangle situation. Rodney and Justin talk. They're friends. So like this is all very uncomfortable. Uh, Gen we haven't mentioned Genevieve and Aaron yet. They, oh yeah, are, uh, oh, we didn't mention them from the beginning when I know. they were so fucking jealous about. Uh, no, when that's, Aaron is so yeah, we'll about talk Justin. about Gen yeah, is which is exactly what's happening. Genevieve, yeah. Genevieve is a classic girl who just recently got kind of dumped by a guy, sort of, mm -hmm. and like doesn't fucking like the guy. So now she's gonna say bad things about him. She's yeah. like, I don't like Justin. He's mean. He's all these things. Like, mm -hmm. and clearly that's bothering Aaron. He does not like this. He changed the story, or I don't know. She, he wanted the story to be, you know, things didn't work out with Justin. Then Aaron came, and he was so great, so much better. And they just had a better connection. Yeah. So she left Genevieve Justin Genevieve was like, well, that isn't what happened. You know, he came, and he went on a date with Victoria, and then that, yeah. and then I, and then you came, and it worked out. And he did not like that version of the story. No. He stormed off. These two are toxic. Toxic. Yep. Toxic, I'm slipping. Up. Yeah, it's straight up. Like they. I also, Aaron got so upset about that. But wasn't it Wells that was asking? Like, what's the deal with all that? Like, it was yeah. somebody on the show. Yeah, like, I think it was been Wells. There. Like, it wasn't like it was a brand new person that that needed to, you know, not know this information. He was like, "What's going on? I need you to like jog my memory." And Aaron just kind of wanted to gloss over the whole thing. And then Genevieve was like, "No," trying to explain. I think from. If I'm trying to understand her perspective, I think that she's trying to express, like, why she has beef with him. Like, because yeah. she had been talking shit about him. Yeah. So, obviously, if he just, like, they talked and now it's whatever, like, why would she be talking shit of her? She needs, th there's an important part of the story, which is that he kind of fucked her over, went out with the t Victoria, and then, you know, dipped. And goodbye. So, there's a reason that she doesn't like him. And I think it's kind of valid that she doesn't like him. Yeah. yeah. I, would, I would be such a fucking bitch to whoever that was coming back. Even if I was, like, the happiest I've ever been. It's too fresh. It's been, like, a couple days. Like, right. I'm still gonna be rude. I think yeah, that's fair. I don't and know. maybe that's immature. And look, in a wild twist, I'm gonna mention the twins at at the end because honestly, it's irrelevant to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the I have a little bit to say about the twins. Yeah, the uh, the move that Aaron makes is like something I have never seen before. She Genevieve just wants a little alone time with Aaron. She says, hey, like, Bro. can I get you for five minutes? She's trying to tell him she's falling in love with him. She yep. wants privacy. Yep. And she's just telling him how she feels. <laughs> and he Bro. says that she's gaslighting him. It was... Bro, but he, in reality, I think he was gaslighting her by saying she's gaslighting him. Without question. I he make, just, like, made that up. He he does not know what gaslighting means. I, wanna, I also want to be clear that I don't know what gaslighting <laughs> is. Okay. It's totally one, fine. Just like, it's one, it's, the reason I don't know what it is is because it's one of those internet terms that mm -hmm. people use so often yeah. that I completely don't know what the definition is. Yeah. And you, we I'll don't have to go to over you. it, but, but it's 
I, when people start throwing it around, I get real confused. Well, it's just that, like, real gaslighting is so much worse than people being like, you're gaslighting me. Right, like, that's that, not really, like, when you're yes. actually being gaslit, you're in an abusive relationship. Like, that's right. a horrible fucking thing. A form of psychological manipulation in which the abuser attempts to sow self-doubt and confusion in their victim's mind. Yeah, that's really bad. That's like the really horrible thing. So when people are, I they, 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 it's people normally like distorting it. reality. It's like yeah. you want to make like, someone. Like don't tell me, you'll be like, yeah. oh, I'm, I, uh, I'm going to go to the store later. Do you need anything? And then I'll be like, no, I'm good. And then you'll come home without things I need. And I'll be like, didn't you get me this? And then you'll be like, oh, I thought I asked you if you need anything. You said no. It's like, no, I told you I needed this. How could you not remember that? And it's oh. like, what the fuck? And, and then all of a sudden you're apologizing to me. You're going back out of the store, whatever. Right. That's gaslighting. That's like a lower, a lesser version. Less, and when in reality, all Genevieve said was um you know i would like for you to spend more time with me because you're spending a lot of time with the boys and mm. he was like um, whoa whoa that's all i'm really whoa. looking, all don't, really don't looking question for him. Aaron when it comes to him hanging out with the fucking boys he okay really, he all he wants to do is hang out in the hang pool with swim the boys. drink some beers with the boys do not cut into that time no or he will not have i like what she said she's like we're not on like a fucking vacation with, no. with all our friends like, I, this is like i'm a, not gonna lie i laughed a little bit when she packed her stuff and then he started to start crying and he was like like I just want to I just want to like give her a kiss and like hang out with her but then like throw the football with the boys <laughs> <laughs> he's got he's got big time summer camp vibes yeah. he's like it's We're incredible down at the beach. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah, my yeah. girl I got my boys we yeah. got football which is yeah. sweet <laughs> yeah. and we can throw it around and we don't have jobs down here it's awesome exactly. and I don't want it to end he has he has a bad case of FOMO like he can't yeah. he can't go off and have Genevieve tell him that he loves him because he needs to make sure that he's in the mix he needs to make sure yes. he knows what's going on he wants to know the goss he wants to know what's happening with the boys like he, he, his focus is the boys and Genevieve's right it should be Genevieve because this is the fucking this is the beach this yeah. is, we're getting engaged the happiest Aaron ever has been was when all like 15 of them were on that bed together yeah. and he's like we're <laughs> yeah. just hanging man yeah. this is awesome that we're all getting to hang he out together it. and then they got he into such it. a bad argument that they all ran away. So bad. He, I have never seen someone botch a situation as bad as Aaron did there. Like I, like yes, Genevieve was dramatic in in way in certain ways where she's like running away. I'm packing it up. I won't have a conversation. But at the same time, I feel like she's definitely hurt and but it's hard to go like, whatever. When, when he, she, right. when she came back to him, yes. and was oh, no. like, was "Can we talk say. for ten minutes?" Yes. And he was like, "Uh, yeah, uh, yeah." And then he was like, "She's like, Genevieve, why do you, you have to hesitate?" He was like. Well, I mean, you want to talk right now. I just want to make sure it's a good time for me right now. I'm like, what Aaron, what are you doing? Idiot. What? You are shooting yourself idiot. in the foot. You guys, Aaron and Genevieve have looked so good these last couple of weeks, and he's just ruining all you of it. You just know, you know that after their conversation where, where she's like trying to get a long time and he's trying to be like, no, like we're hanging out. From that moment on until that second conversation, he was reassuring himself, like, yeah, for sure. Like, stand up for yourself. Like, this is what you want. Like, yeah. relationships are equal. Like, stand up for yourself. And it's like, no, this is not the time to be pushing the relationships are equal situation. You were not hurt as badly in this situation as you hurt Genevieve. Let her explain what the fuck is up and just clean the shit out of your ears for two seconds. Like, don't don't run around and be like, oh, well... It's not good for me right now. He's, oh, really, Aaron? Fuck off. Like, I just, ooh. He's super stubborn. Hated him. He's very stubborn. Yes. Stubborn. Very, yeah, that I was glad to see tears later. I was like, the you only thing that will come back from here is fucking tears. And, and I'm glad that there were What's tears. wild about this whole thing is that this all ended with them telling each other they were falling in love with each other. Right. And what? hugging and kissing on the beach. They're just like, I just fucking love you, man. What did, like, what did like, Aaron what say being? when he was like, everything was all good, and then I say one thing, you pack your bags, and here you are on the jungle bridge, and it's like, he kept yeah. saying jungle bridge. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, no, the jungle path. Jungle, jungle path. path, jungle wait, path. Wait, 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 he I wrote just, it down too. I, all caps. The first, he, he was like, uh, you know, we've argued whatever back and forth, uh, and you've had all these issues, but like, the first thing that happens with me, and your packed bags in the jungle path. <laughs> like, screamed it. Just the way that he sees Hilarious. the world is very interesting. Uh, Hilarious. Yeah. And Victoria so was very funny throughout the Vic whole thing. Yeah, Victoria was cracking me she up because she was yeah. like, "Look, you, you don't fight like this if you don't really care about yeah, each other." No, so kind of I don't know that Victoria may have had one too many toxic relationships in her life. Yeah. Also, that she was like, "Yeah, this is a relationship that definitely." She's like, "This is yeah. familiar. Definitely this feels works. good. Yeah, yeah. It's like a like, warm. Well, coat. No, we're getting where we want to. This is like with a warm this, coat. yeah." <laughs> She's like, this is amazing. Um, very quickly, the twins came down, Justin and Joey. Mm -hmm. They went on a date with Shanae and Florence. Shanae and Florence are beautiful women. 
young women and they look like these two, like they look like their mother. Yes. They were doing body shots. It, visually, it made me uncomfortable the entire time. <laughs> Can I say? Um, and I can't believe that at the end of these dates, they were both kind of like into it. Can yeah. I tell you, I thought it was the best date that's like ever been on the show. I agree. <laughs> I thought, I, I'll say though, I got pissed off when I saw more sex and food stuff. Like yeah, they were making obviously. them into burritos and yeah. whatever. You know, I fucking hate Where'd that. Where they get a tortilla that I day? don't know. I bet it was that blanket. That's all I, bet I it was think one about. Of those, I bet it was one of those tortilla blankets. That you buy on like Amazon. Oh. Because it was really floppy. I was hoping it was a real tortilla. Yeah, I bet it I was, was like, a blanket. Can I, like, can I order those? Can <laughs> yeah. I do that? Just, yeah. Get, just make a ton of chips. Where did they get a, a bunch, tortilla hey. that big? Order a bunch hey. of guac and just have a good yeah. Saturday. Yeah, yeah. And just like um, cut little slices. Anyway, so I think that. I love that too. It was, it was very funny. I think that Shanae and Florence both went in there being like, you know, we're cougars. This is insane, whatever. But I do think that it was cute that because they were so young, they like didn't really give a fuck about how they looked. And I do think that they like had more fun that way. Like they weren't, yeah. they weren't so worried about like keeping their guard up. They, both of them in their heads were like, oh, this is going nowhere. Might as well make the most of it. Take a million tequila shots and like shake my tits right, or right. whatever. And then, um, you know, they end up both having an amazing time and making out with them and like maybe pursuing a connection. Like that's, you never know. You never know. That's the most fun I've seen any contestants have on yes. any date in a very long time. Without question. Because it was, there wasn't like a total attachment angle to it. But at the end, they did seem like they were into it. It's yeah, a, I don't know if that's going to go anywhere. But It's a real hit to Jacob if Shanae ends up being like, I would yeah. like to pursue uh, <laughs> that would be Joey. Fucking, that would be fucking crazy. It sounds like that might happen. Like, I know. In the, next, in the previews or whatever, it was like... I, sounded you know, like pretty into it. We didn't know Shanae was into younger men. And it's yeah, I, I think know. she is very much into younger men. 100%. Like, they're, on, you, they're on a similar... It got similar, uh, you know... She was glowing. Processes. She, yes. and youth. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. She was glowing Jason on that youth. day. Yeah, she was. They, she really they was. did have a great time. She looked beautiful. Like she's never looked so pretty. I don't think. Oh like, no, she, she's maybe looking, she was drunk. She's been looking great on the beach. Honestly, yeah. she has. She's maybe she was um, drunk or something. But yeah. like she was, she was <laughs> smiling yeah. so much. Like I, she just looked so happy with those children. It was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where we are right now. All the other couples are pretty solid. We'll see what happens if things change up. Mm -hmm. Definitely not the end of the Aaron and Genevieve drama. I'm sure. No. We have questions. Mm -hmm. The questions are coming from our studio audience. <laughs> I've got them. Ready? I'm ready. First There's question a lot is, of giggles happening in the studio audience, yeah, I so giggles. I don't know what kind of uh, questions. No, oh, okay. I only have I have two, two that have come through. So, two that have come through, and maybe I'll, and maybe you throw me your phone after. First question is. There's no service down here. Yeah, there's no service. Oh, that's gonna suck for my Taylor Swift ticket thing. Ugh. Um, just an all-encompassing all right. thing I know. right now. Good. Taylor yeah. Swift is just everywhere. I know. She she is. Is. She's everywhere. Okay. Uh, who would you have rather had a second chance at the? Beach this season instead of Justin. Okay, so who would you rather have come down instead of Ooh, Justin? Who was already sent home? Mm, at this point, I'm saying my boy who Adam. Left <laughs> when I th oh, um, who did Michael have a connection with at first, and then she left? Yeah, and he yeah, stayed? yeah, yeah. Sierra. Oh, Sierra. Sierra. She Friend, was that's great. a good she put on the stars. Yeah, that is a really. I'd good actually, I'd go yeah. with Sierra as well. That's yeah. a really it good was, pick. It was a weird situation because I thought that Michael should have left and Sierra should have stayed. Yeah. But no. if Michael's going to stay, I think Sierra should come back. I agree. I would have liked Jill to find someone as well. I, you know, I wish, I wish Jill's that, a good one. I wish that worked out for her. Yeah. That was another, yeah, another abrupt leave. Yeah, it was. Jill. I don't know who else. I, I'm just, I'm just saying Adam. I think he should have stayed. I think he should stay. He should never have to leave. <laughs> he was so great. He deserves somebody. And I thought him and Florence, ugh, whatever. Uh, without Roddy in the picture, who or would you support Justin and Eliza? I think no, because I really don't like Justin. Um, not a fan I of think him. yes. Yeah. I don't. Justin hasn't really given me too much of a reason to like dislike him. I, there was sometimes when he was talking to Genevieve that like weren't great, but it, he really didn't like do anything that bad i think he might remember just be he, like he, remember when he was like it's my birthday i think he might just be like a like a little arrogant which yeah I, that's why I, I don't really fuck yeah, with him i think his so, attitude is shitty i yeah it's it's Maybe. tough to, yeah. to imagine a uh no rodney because i do think it's fucked up that like justin and rodney are close yeah yeah and he's still like no i really like eliza so i'm gonna go after your girl yeah. Yeah. That leaves a bad taste in my mouth with justin i agree, totally agree. And i think with the friends too i think with everybody else on the beach it's kind of like ooh. I probably wouldn't have done that. Right, like Andrew's like, ah. Like I think Andrew and Brandon are like, mm, you know, that's kind of a scummy move. Right, your beard of Justin, go out Can I there. I tell you, did we share with you that um, when Jared and Ashley came and talked to us, Jared shared a story that he said he wished he aired that he was talking to Brandon about how he and Ashley got together. Oh, I think we that, didn't tell me about yes, that. Yes, oh. and that there was a 
Obvi- she was with Kevin. Ashley was with Kevin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And he kissed Ashley in the airport when they were, like, still, to- she was still technically with Kevin. Yeah. And Brand- he told Brandon the story, and Brandon was, like, like pure heart. Brandon was, like, yo, like, she w- they were still together? And he was, like, yeah, I had to make a move. And he goes... That's sketch. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, like, yeah. That's sketch. Brandon, that's pure, sketch. Br- pure so, you Brandon. Know, that's, He's so that sweet. is Brandon. Like, there's no way Angel. Brandon is liking the moves Justin's making. No way, not a chance. No, no. way, not nope. a chance. Uh, do we think Jer- uh, Aaron and Genevieve will be back on the beach next year if they don't work out? Oh, I, that's I, hilarious. I hope not. I hope I, not. You know what? From Genevieve's tweets, I think. I don't know if she's going to put herself through that again. No, 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 no. And I think Aaron she's can't go back for it. Aaron can't go back for number three. He's no. got to be done. It's too many times for Aaron. <laughs> and I think, uh, I think, yeah, Genevieve is having a hard time with that. I think that it's good for her, though. Like, I bet she's learning a lot from this. Like, I feel I like so emotionally too. she's growing I think a so lot too. if that's something. Where, I, I feel that Aaron and Genevieve both as people are, like, taking this really seriously. And, and even though we've seen a lot of mess with them, I still feel like they're, like, growing as people. I'm very proud of them both. Like, I Like, watching agree. them, it's like I'm enthralled by their relationship. And I do think that they make a good pairing. Yeah. They have, they each have perhaps personal yes. improvements to make. Not necessarily improvements. It's just personal growth is there. Totally. Like, to be had. Like, yeah. I think... Aaron has some issues he needs to work on, mm-hmm. and Genevieve does a little bit too. To come together, they would be really great if those things were figured out, mm-hmm. but it causes some friction. And I'd right. also say a little turbulence is good. Like I, yeah. I look at yeah. a bra- I look at a Brandon Sorry, and Victoria. Serene, and you're kind of like, <laughs> I, look, well, I think Brandon and Serene are going to make it. I think there's probably going to be an engagement. Yeah, but you do worry that you're. It's like an all honeymoon phase. Like, Aaron and, and Genevieve are a little bit too up and down. Mm-hmm. Right. There's but, somewhere in between that's... Right. You can't yeah. be perfect all the time. No, this is boring. And have it, not only is it boring, but it's not realistic. Yeah. So then when you leave the beach, it's like, all right, hopefully everything's perfect all the time on the, on the outside yeah. world, too. Mm-hmm. And, again, I think Brandon and Serene are pretty solid. But yeah. a little turbulence doesn't hurt. You also get... Uh, you get more space off the beach, like in real life. Like they're they're up each other's ass mm-hmm. on the beach this whole entire time. In real life, if they can just kind of, you know, go to the store or something when they're mad, like yeah. they're right. just like, oh, yep. I'm pissed off, I'll just go to the store and calm down. You know what I mean? Like yeah. do something like that. Definitely. Um, do you think the show would be as good without the producers driving the narrative? I'm curious about that. That's hard to know. It is I think hard. that they're. I think that they have. They're definitely like having a. A heavy it's a hand very this fine season, line. They, but they I do are think having a heavy hand. But you have I think to that have people somebody. too, though, are like are yeah. are feeding into it more than usual. I feel like in previous seasons they kind of would object to doing these things. I think that there are a lot of people on this season that are willing to kind of, you know, make a show versus yeah. other seasons. Um, and also, last thing, just what do we think our ideal date at Paradise would be? Specifically for me, because I don't like the food stuff. Um, I, I don't mind all those, like, spiritual ones. I think that the, the one that with Johnny and Victoria that we saw this time around, I just thought was kind of boring. Like, it was a little strange, but I yeah. do like those. Um, yeah, I just hate when they, like, have to involve food. Like, I don't understand. <laughs> like, I, would I don't like mind the, the blindfold ones. ones where it's like you have to, like, that's a little scary or whatever, but it's like, ooh, my senses. Yeah, I would like to do, like, the zip lining. I would love to do the zip line as well. Like, those so, are fun. Stuff like that. Like, oh, a little so adventure. adventure there, there the, the, the boats are yeah. cool. Right, they, they go out on yachts. Yeah, I would love that. There was that. that really uncomfortable one with Brittany and Peter. Yeah, um, that was That was yacht. a horrific oh, date, yeah. but sitting on a yacht. Not so bad. Not so bad. Champagne. Champagne. Yeah, yeah, that's a good date. All right, let's cut some stems, hand out some roses. It's tough. I'm telling you, this is maybe the hardest part of the show when it comes to two episodes because it feels like it's almost too much to choose from, and then you forget everything. I've I've forgotten everything. I know, me too. Um, Ellie, do you want to go first? Uh, yeah. Let me look at my little notesy notes. Let me see if I have anything here that jogs my mem. Um, I'm gonna. (laughs) Sorry, I have like a stuffy nose, and I feel like it's. I feel like it's affecting my life today. Um, (laughs) let's see. I'm going to. Uh, I'm gonna. Cut the stem. I'm gonna cut a stem first. Okay. Of uh, Eliza. Yeah. Her, didn't like that. Yeah. Didn't like any yep. of that with Rodney. Very upset by it. Not a fan. And um, I'm gonna give my rose to. Um, I'm trying to think of something from the second episode that I liked. You know. I'm gonna give my rose to Victoria F. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because. I'm sure it was all part of the filming and whatever, but she was running at the Genevieve 
constantly trying to get her not to leave, and that's a good friend. She was yeah. being a good friend. Yep. And I don't care if it was like you know a little bit for extra cloud, extra whatever. Like it could have been, but I she also think she genuine. really thinks that they're like a good couple. Yes. So she was yeah. like, guys, it seemed like stop genuine. Fighting. It seems sweet. And even even when Genevieve was like slamming doors and like locking her out, whatever, she'd be like, come on, it's just me. Like just right. let me in. Like whatever. I thought that was nice. I thought it was good because Genevieve was like definitely making a mistake, definitely letting her emotions get the best of her. And you gotta have a, a level-headed friend around to pull you out of those situations sometimes. And Victoria F. I, I, she's my friend now. Dude, I really like Victoria. I can't F. believe that the she's spin I've done. She's, she's been great. She's a co she's a different person. She's a, can we say that? I think she's a different person. I wonder what she would say. I, I agree. I, I about felt like her own performance. Kelly, I feel like you definitely really liked the line when the twins came down in her interview. She was like, "Twins." Yes, <laughs> she was like, <laughs> she's like, I, I don't know why. Like, because it's I think the commercial. Of twins, you have to. And she was like, "I got to shake my." I got to shake my. remember the 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 What is it like it's, the uh, beer and commercial twins, the beer and, commercial. and twins? Yeah. Like yeah. everybody remembers that. It's with yep. the big titties. Yeah, Victoria's stuff. had a great season. Yeah, she's she's crushing it right now. I like her. She seems genuine. I think that she made the, the right choice, you know, picking Johnny and all that. And I, I'm I'm on yeah. I'm on her side. Trent, um, I'm gonna start with a stem cut as well. I'm gonna cut Hayden's stem. Mm. Oh, good one. Because boy, he is just well deserved. Goodbye. He's just a hard person to God, watch. He just and he, it just feels like he sets himself up after. They went through all those lines of things he said on The Bachelorette, thinking like, hey, here's your opportunity to clarify some of those things. He just kind of doubled down on all of them. He not only, not only the did he did that, and he brought up to Kate that he may have said that his ex was hotter than Gabby yeah. and, and Rachel. And then he was, she was like, did you say that? And he's like, I don't remember. Uh, I, may, like, I was just two. talking to the boys. I don't know. I met yeah, that too. As if we're just chatting with the boys. I was like, all right, now uh, we're, yeah. we're, we're like a, a one click away from locker room talk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, sake. Hayden is, he's no good. And then I'm going to give my rose to Rodney because he's just Aww. going through a lot. And I hope it works out for him. And I hope Justin comes to his senses at some point. I don't think he's going to. No. Uh, but hopefully Eliza. That's that's a messy one. But. I'm afraid that Eliza is just gonna freak out so much that she's just gonna leave. Yeah, I think that's probably. Do you think right. that she would? Yeah, she. Who did that? Yeah, Teddy. Everybody, mm -hmm. Teddy did it. Teddy did it too. Rodney. With, with to Rodney and, oh, poor and Rodney. Andrew. <laughs> everyone's everyone's so afraid of, of their love with it's Rodney. Like they're like, all so afraid to pick I one of the guys that they think is they're better just leave it. Rodney's getting to the point where I think he needs to. Punch Justin in the face. I think I think he need right. Just he needs to do, shed a little bit of that. He needs to do like a badass. Just something. shed a little no, bit of like, that. Stop likeability. being so nice. Stop being so nice. Yeah, just just yeah. Th just right. ruffle just, some feathers, just, Rodney. Maybe just push him. Yeah, push him. Push him. People are like whoa, Rodney. Push him down in the and surf. the wise would be like, oh my god. Push goodness. him in the ocean, like a right. poof, in the yeah. waves. Wow, you look him. foolish. Yeah, a little bit of a scuffle. Yeah, yeah. on a banana peel. You guys are really throwing the ball out here. I think a little a scuffle. A good prank. No, yeah. I think a Rodney push him down the fucking stairs. Right, a Rodney scuffle would go a long way. Um in maybe getting Eliza. But I like Rodney. I'm going to give him my rose. Yeah. Nice. Um, I'm going to be cutting the stem of Kate. Yes. Nice. Thank you. I just. Yep. Yep. I'm, I'm not liking this roller coaster ride I'm on with her. No, I, just, I don't like it at all. It makes me uncomfortable. Feels yeah. Like, it feels like I'm getting I'm getting the run around, you know? Yeah. I, I'm I don't not know, even in it. I don't know right. what, what game she's playing. Same. And there are games afoot. Certainly. My rose, I'm going to give... To, I don't know. Dramatic. I'm gonna give it to mm. Brandon. Oh, okay. I just like. He just gets me every time. Like he's just so he's a sweet. Good guy. Even when he walked, when the, all the boys walked in on Monday night for the rose ceremony, and the girls were all girls were all dressed up. Mm -hmm. He's like, woo! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Serene. Like they're yeah, like he's yeah. so locked in. He, she's immediately sitting on his lap. I hope it doesn't get to be the point that it's too much because that can happen. Yes. But I think Serene loves it, so I think they're in a good place. And then just the the bro love for Rodney on that beach was yeah. was so pure of just – it was an incredible line. If I was a woman, I'd just – I'd be in your arms. Sometimes as a so guy, that's nice. just what you want to hear from, yeah. your, from your guy friends. From your bros. It's exactly. so like if – It's just nice. Know. It's just – it's a little confidence boost. Like, yeah, hey, man, It listen, was just like, right. so nice. I'd, I'd be there. You're not doing anything if wrong If it were here. me, I'd be there. Yeah. Exactly. We yeah. could spoon for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You can be a little spoon. <laughs> it was just a very – it was – I thought it was very sweet. And it was – Rodney needed a little pick-me-up. So – and Brandon was there to do it. Yep. Um, all right, guys. That wraps it up for Cutting Stems. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back for another week. We have, I think, three weeks left. I think so. So three right more cutting right? stems before, right before Thanksgiving is yep. when we're done.
Okay. All right. I don't know what kind of finale situation we're, we're going to get. I would guess, I hope some kind of reunion element. Because that used to be the best part. Well. They stopped doing those. I know. They were good. I would love a reunion. So let's hope that that is something that's happening. Thank you all. We'll be back next week. No matter what season it is, Vizzy has a vibe for you. Whether you're cuddling up on the couch, whether you're going to a tailgate over the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, whatever it is that you're doing, Vizzy has a flavor for you. They also have the Vizzy Mimosas. It has a refreshing taste of real orange juice and is perfect for that daytime sipping. Like I said, a tailgate situation early in the morning, you wake up, maybe you don't want to jump to something right away. So you go for a Vizzy Mimosa. They also have two variety packs. So they have variety pack one, variety pack two that is filled with all different flavors, all different fruits. You know, that's why I love Vizzy because they don't discriminate with the fruits. They got pomegranate in there, which is personally one of my favorite fruits. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can see the pomegranate it's right in front of us. So Vizzy Heart Seltzer, there is a flavor for every vibe. Go to VizzyHeartSeltzer.com slash chicks to find Vizzy near you. That's VizzyHeartSeltzer.com slash chicks. And to hear first about the latest flavor drops and more, sign up at VizzyHeartSeltzer.com slash subscribe. You must be 21 and up. Remember, celebrate responsibly. Coming from the Molson Coors Beverage Company in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. All right, everyone. We are here with a very special guest. We are joined by actress Lake Bell. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here with me. <laughs> we are so excited because really you are here to talk about voice, voice. the yeah. art of voice, mm -hmm. speaking. You're already giving Rhea goosebumps from <laughs> have the way you sound in the microphone and sound in this room. And you have a audio book yes. that is all just, uh, of course, audio, <laughs> inside voice. It's your obsession with just the sound of voice and your own voice. And we've gotten to listen to some of it. Mm -hmm. And it is, it's fascinating. It takes you, like you close your eyes and you're just on this trip where you can basically imagine things that are happening, but there's street sounds and strangers and voices, and it's really a fascinating project. Why did you want to get into something like this? I mean, I my first my first feature that I wrote and directed um, called In a World is about voice, and it totally- In a world. In a world, <laughs> exactly, yeah. that's why it's called that. Yep. And I <laughs> that highly recommend. Really Thank you. <laughs> Very, very good. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. No, well, here's what I'll say. Um, this is an extension of that work. I feel like it's a lifelong obsession with really just, <clears throat> see, and I'm <laughs> acutely aware. Um, but I think that, you know, we, we carry so much information with our voice and we're often just looking in the mirror before we leave to go somewhere and we think, okay, what am I going to wear? What necklace am I going to earrings? Oh, what lip am I going to do? You know, but we don't think about our voice as the literally the integral mouth mouthpiece to all communication, right? So, <clears throat> excuse me. So for instance, like, you know, you both carry such a roadmap of these things. Like you're a tapestry of all of the things that you've experienced, traumas and and happinesses and what your mom sounded like or what, you know, a, an auntie that you loved or whatever, right? It's a multitude of those things as well as where you live now, where you grew up, right? What borough, you know? It's like pop culture, sure, all of those things inform. But then Additionally, it's like there are some choices we make, you know, we kind of like broadcast what kind of, you know, friend group we want to have sometimes when we style shift. It's often called code switching, but like style shifting a little bit, you know, if maybe you're home or you're with your friends and you're drunk or whatever, you're having a little a couple of drinks. And then, you know, I'm from New York and then maybe my hard D's mm -hmm. and T's come out a little bit, you know, it's like a, a bit of yeah. this, a bit of that. I get real loud. So, yeah. yeah. Long Island. Long yeah. Island. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. where are you guys from? So I'm from Long Island. What, what part? Uh, Nassau. Nassau. I'm New yeah. Jersey. New Jersey. Yeah. So what, like these are, yeah. I'm <laughs> yes. from Manhattan, so I, I love this shit. Yeah. And then <clears throat> additionally, both great accents. You, it, they're, They are um, subtle, but probably because also there's a sense of arrival here, right? Like you're at work, you're articulating probably a little bit better than you would normally, right? There, there's a sense of you're both acutely aware of what you're doing with your voice 
But then there's off-duty, you know, the off-duty versions of your voice, which I'm sure imbue different characteristics, you know? Right. Yeah. And you talk about the fact that, you know, so many people hate the sound of their voice, <laughs> right? Like, like we do a podcast for a living, and when we hear him play the audio out loud, we go, no, no, no or, it's, like, it's, shut it, it off, shut it off. Right. Yeah. I can't listen to my voice, which is weird because... There are other people listening to our voice. So where do you fall on that? Do you like the sound of your own voice now? Well, okay. So what's really interesting, what you brought up is so true. And I, I think that's one of the seed of the the thought on the book was, why is there such a collective self-loathing yeah. uh, for our own voice? It's unbelievable, actually. And then also, to boot, a lack of self-awareness of it. So it's like, oh, God, is that what I sound? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. there's that, and yeah. then there's the like, oh, don't play, oh god, don't play it back, don't play it back, right? And I think it's because we have, and I will answer your question about what, how I think feel about my voice, but I think because when you the voice that you're hearing as you speak is reverberating off of the the skeletal structure of your skull. Okay, so it's like bouncing against the walls of that structure and it feels a bit deeper, a little more resonant. It sounds different than when it's played back. It just it's just yeah. true. So with that that uh, is unsettling. Yeah. You know, cuz yeah. it doesn't sound as mm -hmm. you as I'm speaking now, I'm thinking, "Oh, this is what it sounds like." And then when it's played back, there is that disassociation. But I or disconnect, I should say. But really, I, I'm i so, because I now, I write, I've done two feature films that I've written and directed and star in, right? So I'm not squeamish anymore about performance in general. So voice kind of falls under that a little mm -hmm. bit, just because I've had to kind of be so objective with myself. You know? Right. And I do think that there is, there, it is such a weird, it's a crazy phenomenon, and especially for the two of us who... You know, this is a podcast mostly. Yes, there is a visual element and people can watch it, but most people listen to it. So we have had multiple instances where we're out in public and somebody comes up to us and they say, you know, I, I couldn't tell if it was you until I heard you speak and then I knew it was you. And I was like, I can't believe that is my recognizable feature yes. is something that I never thought was that special mm -hmm. uh, it's is, totally is the probably the most recognizable thing about the both of us and do you yeah. guys do you warm up before work no <clears throat> no but we we're talk just so much anyway talking <laughs> But but what's so interesting? I about lose my voice a lot. Well, I was going to yes. say, so you yeah. you you have a specific rasp to it. Yeah, I lose my voice a lot. You do, and so I would just argue as a vocally as a vocal Help. friend, <laughs> yes, that that you know you are in the business of voice, and that think about like when you go to the gym or something, and you're about to like oh, I'm going to do CrossFit, you know, <laughs> like you wouldn't just cold do crossfit right. i mean you gotta stretch your hammies or something yeah, you know right. like yep, don't yep. fuck it up yep. <laughs> so it's the same thing yeah. like if you had you know just gave your voice a little love a little a little stretching a little bit of you know sort of um dropping your breath and like allowing for you to kind of open up your vocal mechanism hot tea all that shit but that that kind of like love and care a little vocal self-care yeah i need to get um, on i need to die too yeah, because you're maybe. you're talking from that point of view. You oh know, yeah, yeah. yeah, and and this yeah. is this is I'm in that good is. shape right yeah. now. Uh, we're you know there's mo Mondays that I come in here sometimes after sports like, games, uh, sure, and, sure, know, sure, events. And My voice changed. Of we, course. Yeah. So okay, talk me last. Yeah. Okay, I spoke one way okay. forever, <laughs> or and actually my voice was a lot raspier. It was a little bit when I was younger. Okay. Then. For years, you know, spoke one way. And then last summer, something happened. I don't know what it was. We went on break. Okay. Right? Yeah. And then... You're going to have to expand on this. I, I, you it know, dropped I was, a little bit. What? It Did dropped. it drop? Yeah, like I, I, I think I like partied a little bit, you know. All of a sudden came back, my voice was different. And now when people... Mm. It, it really is. And now sure. when people listen to the podcast, uh -huh. they laugh because they're like, when we listen to old episodes, your voice sounds so different. Okay. And mainly in pitch? Do you find? Yeah. yeah, I think it's just like a little. It's just a little lower. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. So, for instance, like uh, off the truck, my voice is probably a bit higher than I when I arrive here for you and I'm talking to you, you guys, and I'm, I'm asking for some level of 
of you to trust my authority in something, right? Like I'm mm-hmm. talking about a project and it's kind of important, you know, I, it's important to me. And, you know, and so I've lowered my, I feel that I naturally will lower my uh, pitch. That said, I've had two children and hormonally, you, yeah. as you do grow up and as you <clears throat> you change your voice does kind of mature and become richer. And that's why when you think about like, it was so unreal when a 19-year-old Lauren Bacall had a voice of a woman, you know? And it's like, wow, what's up with that? You know, that was very sexy at the time, you know? And of course, our views of what's sexy has shifted Mm -hmm. somewhat. Um, And that's what, I guess, brings me to the sexy baby voice. Right, that's (laughs) I I wanted to bring that up because you do have a whole part two of your your book is about the sexy baby voice. And it's funny too, because I think, um, you know, uh, Taylor Swift just had a new album Mm -hmm. come out and she uses sexy baby in a a line and everyone was like, what is she talking about? And when I saw that, I was like, this is exactly what she's (laughs) talking about. Yeah, I know, it's really funny. Um, When I first started doing press for this, um, that's when her album came out. And yeah. then, of course, it was like, oh, do you know about Taylor Swift? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I, I, they were like, are you friends with her? And I was like, I, I, I not that I know of, yeah. <laughs> but I, uh, but I, you know, the night is young. You yeah, know? yeah. Um, yes. No, but it was, it was, it, it definitely, um, there is a moment, to, there. it's a bit zeitgeisty in that, you know, where it's like, yeah, we're aware of it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, in a world I made, um, in 2013 and I was already sort of it's all in in a world as well where this idea of sexy baby this kind of amalgamation this little cocktail of vocal affectation which is really pitch shift up and the vocal fry and then you know of course the up talk so the up speak um which is everything up at the end so it's like you know the the rules are that there are no rules yeah yeah. (laughs) yeah Um, and sounded like somebody from The Bachelor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. And so it's prevalent in it's really sort of rampant in in reality. Yeah, TV. I heard a lot of clips, <laughs> reality TV clips. Well, it's it's that fantastic. You had used. I mean, like I'm in awe of it. Yeah, you know? right. I mean, I I do have qualms with it from feminist bent a little yeah. bit because obviously it's hearkening back to a time when you were a little tiny submissive uh, female self and then it also additionally is like bedroom talk so like yeah. that combo fucks mm-hmm. with me but um that said i kind of feel like all women should speak however the fuck they want to speak yeah. yeah so i'm in in indirect conflict right. on that but i shall say I, I do feel like uh the best case study of it is that uh lady from um love is blind i, th- yeah. I think it's like <laughs> yeah. it's so it's yeah. so fantastic because that's what i'm in awe of it's like it's athletic it's like hard to do that mm-hmm. voice i mean look at paris hilton mm-hmm. right like you yeah. see her in interviews she's and incredible there's that's moments an amazing when example she goes to her regular voice and it's and it's deep and has a lot of Beautiful. like rasp and sound to it but she can turn on the baby voice like she's she, she, I mean that's she's her genius. voice yeah that's like, what she I, talks about it all yeah, the time I was explaining this to my boyfriend the other day because I, we were watching Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and mm-hmm. I was like you know Kathy Hilton is Paris yeah. Hilton's mom and I'm like have you ever seen the Paris Hilton documentary she does not say, I was going on about how yeah. much of a genius she is because she created basically this whole other character based on her voice yeah just exactly. on a voice yeah. alone right yeah I mean Sure, it's the word that's hot, but it's also how it's said. You know, yeah. that's hot. <laughs> yep, exactly. Um, and I think that, yeah, I remember just be kind of being in awe of that. Wow, you know, sure, it's the whole package, but it's also that voice is so unique. And then it became, you know, in the book, I kind of unfurl the, you know, the the origin story of the sexy baby, mm-hmm. you know, because we start at Betty Boop. Because also, guys, Betty Boop is for kids and it's kind of like a sexualized doll that's also a baby. Like, it's so confused, you know. And she's talking like, you know, she's all cookie, cookie. Um, anyway, so the point is, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's a wild ride to get us to this incredible kind of uh, vocal affectation that is so rampant. How did you learn so much about the voice? I think the voice... Because I I went to drama school, I went to a conservatory in, in UK when I was like um, 18 for work and just because it was my passion and voice was already kind of in my interests. You know, I remember being a little kid and like making adults laugh with 
accents and dialects and shit like that. And then, you know, if you're going to make an adult laugh as a kid, you're like, I'm going to hold on to that, Mm -hmm. that trick. And, you know, some, I remember there was one adult who was like, you know, you got a good ear, kid. You know, you got a good (laughs) ear. Yeah. Good ear. Um, And I was like, oh, that sounds cool. Like, I have a good ear. Um, And then that parlayed into just a multitude of characterizations with voice and 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 voice play and then at drama school it was like oh how can i wield this tool and of course when i got to college i was at i was in the uk and they were like you've got to get rid of your strong accent it's so 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 strong and i was like what are you talking about you have the accent like, yeah, yeah. No, no, you're so it's american it's so bad and i'm just like wow okay um and um and that got me thinking oh that's so interesting because i'm we're so ethnocentric we think that our American voices are kind of the baseline, the yeah. neutral, mm-hmm. right? But it's not. It's a yeah. strong accent. And there's so many layers to just an American accent. Like you sure. said, where we're from, we're <laughs> Midwest. Like I went to a speech pathologist oh. because I did acting as a kid. And yeah. they were like, you fix, sound fix that, like fix the a Long 50 Island year accent. old Long Island woman who smokes. Like we need to, mm. you need to sound Midwest. And so I had to go every week and they would hand me like worksheets and a voice recorder. And which is weird because I don't think I've seen a voice recorder since maybe I was 11 or 12 years old. Yeah. <laughs> and they would make me record my voice and how I sound yes. now, which because I've completely gotten out of it. Like, I don't sometimes. I'll, well, you because now you it comes, in, out it comes and of, goes. It comes and goes because like I say coffee, but I know it's coffee. Like I know the, how they taught me to say it. Yeah. But I'm like, well, say who it. Am, yeah. <laughs> Say it. It came out there. Like yeah. really yeah. interesting. And that's in like music, but mm-hmm. in the music of your your voice. But then also, you know, because we'd say um, that's how I say it. And then I like hearing your I see because I'm very pro regionalism. I'm like, I want to hear your fucking accent. Yeah, yeah, I want right. to hear where you're from. I think it yeah. adds character. Yeah. Which is why once I got older, I was like, OK, fuck love whatever it. I learned older. there. Yeah. Love those D's. <laughs> nice. <Yeah. laughs> Do you watch a lot of ASMR or listen to ASMR? <laughs> Tell me where you're going with this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, no. I mean, I don't. But I, I'm more I but I'm down. I'm down mm-hmm. to boogie. Give yeah. me some Rex. <laughs> I just think it's so. Or who does the series yeah. that you like? W Magazine. Yeah, does, yeah. Um, different you have to do. Act, I think you yeah, have to you do that. So, what is it that. like? Vocal. So, because I love med. So, for meditation, you know, I do. Once you get to the end of the book, you'll see something in this realm. You'll be very happy. Um, but the, you know, my my kids at night sometimes they just can't sleep. So, you know, mom will. Pull up, you know, yeah. pull up the big boots and like bring out the meditation voice. I'm like, everything in your body is warm. See, I got it. That ASMR, yeah. it's like a feeling, which I always sound yeah. like such a dick when I say this because it's like some people feel it and some people don't, but it's true. Some people get the chills in their head, mm-hmm. but some people yeah. don't. Oh, interesting. And, and I've read a lot about it because I I couldn't figure out what that feeling was when I was a kid and I would be in school and a teacher would say something and I would like get chills in my head or they would write on the board or whatever it was and I would get like this weird I kind of sh- don't I this is you're kind of teaching me about it cuz I actually don't I would get know. this weird feeling like chills down my spine down my head whatever but and positive? then positive yes yes okay. like the most re- you just feel so relaxed so mm-hmm. I do use it to sleep sometimes where then I found out, I, I forgot how I found out about it, where I saw like ASMR and it explained what it was. And I was like, I think that's the feeling I get. <laughs> yeah. And I looked more into it, watched videos, and it's just something that relaxes you. And if you do feel that feeling, then it's something that helps you. It's it's very it's very weird and I'm not like a pro on it, but I if I watch, if you just like YouTube ASMR videos, W Magazine does it, like if... They'll have but that also like an actress like come sounds, in. Right? Yes, it's it, like it's, it's not a whisper. Like, like a whisper. Like, like can do. It can be like, a, like this. Like, like a tapping. Hello. Like a nail. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to chicks in the office. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like like a sound bath. Like the yeah. <laughs> yes. And it's just little yeah. taps, little things. Like they'll brush hair. I don't know. It's weird, but I love it. Yeah. Well, that's really interesting because voice as an ASMR, right, mm-hmm. um, mechanism, because that would just be one instrument, right? Because there, you're you're speaking of like, you know, that's mm-hmm. ASMR, right? So like ice in a in yeah. a cup or whatever. But it, it this is the thing is our voices are so pliable, and and it's really 
I, I love that you shared the story that your voice had kind of evolved and, and you kind of don't know how. And I find that really cool because yeah. it means we're in a constant state of, you know, shifting and changing based off of just growth, right? You're just, your experiences that summer, or whatever, got you to this sound and that's fucking growth, yeah. you know? And, and should we have the privilege to grow in so many ways but our voice also is a reflection of that yeah and you've gotten to do so many cool voiceover projects as well as you know on camera mm -hmm. projects how do you prepare differently for for a I voiceover stretch. project i stretch mm -hmm. and i drink tea yeah. and better no. start stretching no, i really <laughs> better start stretching <laughs> it's i mean it's the idea is like yeah there there is a sense oh it's don't worry. People okay. are yelling in this office all the time. Yeah. Knock it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Please uh, tell them. Yeah. No, I, I, you know, the only preparation that I really do is 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 a vocal warm up. Okay. You know, just I even in the car, like a maniac, as I'm driving to go do, you know, uh, Harley Quinn to be Poison right. Ivy or something. You know, it's like I, I just do like a full you know, articulation exercises and making sure my breath is supported because those are long sessions. It's like three hours long sometimes and it's just nonstop. So it's it's really preservation. Yeah. You know? I respect my tool. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and I think, you know, the, the superhero thing is very cool. I know you have been involved in the Marvel world now and with What If and potentially Black Panther. I'm allowed to say you can now. say it yes, now yeah. and the movie Good. comes out so soon with Condor Forever. I'm a massive Marvel girl. You are I going love to them. I love this movie. I am so, so excited. Um, how did you get involved in just the Marvel universe? I mean, the what the What If series was really cool. Again, um, Black Widow is played by Scarlett Johansson, right? Yeah. And her voice iconic. Yeah super raspy has mm -hmm. that deepness and when going to animated it was like okay we want to have that kind of tenor right and i was like oh okay and i love scarlet personally and i and I, I think the character's great so i was like yeah i feel like i could do a version of this um especially since i'm i'm well versed in the animated world and so it made sense that i could kind of be an extension mm -hmm. of that in that space but yeah and then uh for uh, Wakanda Forever. Ryan Coogler is the director, and Ryan and I were um, in the same class at Sundance for our first films. Um, 2013, he was there with Fruitvale Station, and I was there with In a World. Mm -hmm. And um, so we were together, and so, you know, we've kind of, I just saw him actually on this on CBS Mornings, um, and I was just like, man, look at us yeah <laughs> um, but um every day um that i joined him on the set because i i do have a small role in wakanda forever and it's fucking awesome um but yeah i just every day like a dork i'd just be like dude yeah this is insane <laughs> he's yeah. like i know it's my second one and i'm just like this is fucking not yeah. <laughs> you know um but it i think we have that sense of play and camaraderie. I think once you're at Sundance, you have a, a tight knit group of filmmakers each year and mm -hmm. you just feel like a sense of, you know, mm -hmm. sort of like a graduating yeah, class. Exactly. Like a, that is it's very cool. I can't wait to see the movie. I'm I'm so excited. People have been waiting for it for so long. But yeah. we're we're such a fan of you and <laughs> those um you've had some absolutely iconic romantic comedies that we are so obsessed with. One of I still quote it to this day, and people either get it or they don't. But in what happens in Vegas, you know why? You know why? <laughs> I knew it. You that. know why? People still come up to me like at, at the airport, and it they're like, "Kills me." You know why? And That's I'm like, like "My, I." You do it back. I do. I go. You know <laughs> why? <laughs> I give it to them every time. Yeah. The junk punch. That's yeah, they're junk like, punch. "Do the line." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, "Well, I'm gonna have yeah. to punch you in the junk." Yeah, yeah. Do that. I'm so sorry, but yeah. I just have to do it authentically. Yeah. So exactly, and, um, um, and 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 it's Jason Sudeikis, and that last scene mm -hmm. is so funny. I mean, Cordry, Rob Cordry, um, in that movie is so funny. Yeah, he He's is. kind of like my counterpart in it. And by the way, I ended up doing two movies with Ashton like within the next yeah. few years. Right. Because then it was No uh, String, no string, no string Attached, attached yeah. which is another. Believe me, we know. Oh, okay. I was like, <laughs> yeah. romantic I just watched comedy. That recently because they put it on Netflix. Oh, oh it's on Netflix. Yes. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so like uh, Cordry. Okay, fun fact. In What Happens in Vegas, the, do you ever have, did you see the final scene of us, what actually happened in the chapel? 
Yes. Okay. Yes. Like it's a seven minute long take mm-hmm. of yes. basically Cameron and Ashton just ham hammered, just Hammityville horror. Yes. Up on the altar. And then it's Cordry and I. And just you guys are like heavily, yeah, heavily yeah, yes, just yes, like yes. saliva <laughs> all over each other's faces. At one point, I don't know if it was in the cut, but I spit in his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember we were, fr- you know, we we're friends or whatever. And um, but I was just like, hey man, um, I think I think I want to, I think I'm gonna spit in your mouth. <laughs> I just want to try. It. Like, are you down for that? <laughs> and he was like, oh, um. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right on, right on. And I was like, <laughs> honestly, the the perfect place to try it for the first. If you're gonna it was, try it, yeah. why not? <laughs> yeah, it was absolute madness. And I just remember um, they just left the cameras running, and we were just improvising and just bullshitting. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't even know how far that this. this I, they better call cut because right. it's just this is a mess in here. Yeah. <laughs> like, we weren't drunk, but it really felt, like felt it. Yeah. yeah. At that point, though, isn't it almost a little less nerve wracking to be making out so wildly versus like a like, like a intimate, really sensual, yes, intimate kiss? Because you're like, we just got to go for it, like, and just be as because as yeah. dirty and messy as we look, it's yeah. gonna be even better. Oh yeah, uh, you, the more like commitment to raunchiness and yeah. ridiculousness is, it's gonna work. Mm-hmm. And you're right, it's far more intimate to be like. And yeah. then, like <laughs> you, <laughs> you have know. to make sure it looks good. Like, yeah, like yeah, how do you're I look like, kissing on the camera. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. This is like I mean, I I have so many jobs in my past where it's just like, um, you know, I mean, even in, in a world at one point, um, you know, Ken Marino's like, um he he <laughs> in a take he 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 sucks my nose <laughs> as a make out yeah. thing. Um, but it, he, we do it super tender, so it's like you think like, oh, he's gonna come in for the game, and then nope, he goes in for the nose. And Ken Marino did that on the day, and I had to cut out in that I am like wanting to laugh so hard, and and then so I said to him after the take, he was like, was that okay? And I was like, it was so fucking funny. I think you have to do an <laughs> oink, yeah, <laughs> because I think it was that, that good. I yeah. want I want you to, I want the audience to be like, wait, did that just happen? And then. Fuck yeah, he doubled down, you know. Yeah. So anyway, it was really, really fun. And yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. I love these stories. It, is it, is so there good. um <laughs> one role that you haven't taken on yet or a voice that you're just dying to do? I mean, you know, <laughs> um, there there are always there's there are so many fucking voices that I haven't gotten to yet. Um, but that said, I do I just I don't know, it's it's interesting. I want to take on a real life character one day, you know, and and on in live action Mm -hmm. and try to work and manipulate my voice to kind of emulate uh, an iconic voice. That would be really fun. You know, I talked to Drew Barrymore in the book about her iconic voice and then her having to take on Grey Gardens, um, that the vocal kind of dialect that her character had. And that was it was kind of extraordinary for someone who already has an iconic voice to iron out enough to to emulate someone else's. Like, I find that to be kind of the be all end all of all vocal kind of you know, right? Uh, North stars, you know. So like a like a biopic type, yeah, kind of like project. something where yes. you're like, ooh, yeah. okay, like that's really mm-hmm. cool. I'm right, and I love look at to- Austin Butler. He talks like Elvis now. <laughs> I know. I would. I would drop. That's I mean, his permanent voice. Yeah. It seems he I, became Elvis. Listen, it suits him. Um, yes, it does. Um, <laughs> we can't really argue it. Yeah. Um, but the the oh, in Man Up, have you seen Man Up? Yes. Okay, so that was really fun for me because mastering an accent and dialect through and through, so that it's so fl- it's so seamless that you can improvise within it. That is my happy place. So it's like right. if I ever take on an accent, and there are so many that I haven't done yet, like really mastering Australian or New Zealand, like I haven't done that yet. So in future, I hope I get an opportunity again yeah. to really, in the way that I kind of holistically took on the accent in Men Up, I, you know. Right. Yeah. Because it's not just memorizing a line Correct. with an accent. It's being able to just speak whatever comes out of your yeah. mouth. Yeah. Because if you're in a movie with Simon Pegg, you want to be able to like ping pong with Simon Pegg. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You don't want him to say something. You're like, uh, I'm sorry, fucking, I don't have that line. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> you want to be able to like 
you know, fucking say whatever, you know. Yeah. And so I think that 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 makes it really fun. It, you, it's almost like putting on a wardrobe. It's like putting on a costume. You're like, yeah. oh, I've put on this gorilla suit and now I'm a gorilla. You know, it's like right. it, it needs to be embodied head to toe. Do you find when you are working with someone like Simon that you get you want to speak like him because I mean, I, I because I'm so vocally self-aware, yeah. I don't tend to emulate. I don't, uh, t- uh, you know, grab onto other people's accents okay. unless we are playing, you okay. know, so it's like, I'm sorry, you know, you know, and this is also a thing where in the book we talk about code switching. It's it's commonly known code switching, but style shifting, I have I have now learned is what I'm really talking about. Um, and that is the idea that when you go home, you might speak differently to all your mm-hmm. girlfriends from right. high school right. than you do, say, if, if a New York Times reporter was going to come and and, and do a review of the show. Right. Right. Yeah. right? That it's, happens yeah, to us all the time. Hey, when, yeah. when, when it's the summer and we're watching nine million hours of Love Island UK, <laughs> like you turn it off and you I come in all you want to do is uh, be able to speak in that accent and you just you're a failure where right. we can't do it but well, there, there are some people you know the the style shifting um also comes into it can be more serious as well there's there's profiling going on um all the time whether unconsciously or consciously um with people's voices right like if you for instance your your parents okay when they ask you or whoever asked you to change to to kind of iron out your accent in order to be what neutral? No, there is no neutral because there it's it's a controversial subject. Uh, you had you had an American accent when mm-hmm. you were a kid. You just yes, it's regionalized yeah. and it's of your borough or whatever. It's your mm-hmm. city, you know. But that's still American. I blame the manager. The manager. <laughs> okay. Well, it's it's not really their fault. Yeah, if no, no, it, no. Be, because at the time, <laughs> right, that yeah. would have been. The, it would have been very customary to do that. Mm-hmm. I know so many people that way. I mean, even growing up, you know, my mom would say, oh, you're being a little hard on the D's and T's, you know, because she just grew up in a time. She actually grew up in Long Island mm-hmm. and she wanted to kind of iron things out, too. Yeah. And because on TV, you're seeing news media, you're seeing, you know, uh, you know, the Gilmore Girls, whatever. Mm-hmm. You're seeing what success sounds like. Right. And it doesn't. It doesn't sound like that, you know, <laughs> necessarily. <laughs> now, these days, yeah, thank it, God it sounds like that. Yeah. It sounds like anything. Sounds like anything you want. Anything yeah. you yep. fucking want. And yeah. thank God, you know. Right. But that's that's been a long, you know, bumpy path to get there. Yeah. But that said, I think um, it still occurs. You know, we look at the news and we, we hear that really ironed out. We do not hear super regional accents, no. mm-hmm. right? Um, really, really guilty of it in the UK. They they have like the Queen's English up yeah. there on the BBC, and you know it's it's tradition. People are used to it. Fine, but it is kind of broadcasting this message that this is this is what you should be. Yeah, that's yeah. what that's baseline. Yeah. Well, it's not. It's just so rarefied those right. accents. You know. Yeah. Well, this is fascinating. I we find could, this all of we could talk <laughs> so to you about this for forever. Um, we're gonna wrap up. Okay. We would love for you to tell everyone how they can purchase the audiobook, okay. listen. Um, it's okay. a b- very easy process. It's very easy and also it's just a good listen. Because yeah. at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, it's like I'm gold definitely blue, going to Jeff listen. Gold I am blue, so like, fascinated by Stu all Yasmin, who's yeah. like, what the fuck, Larry? You know, <laughs> yeah. like, oh, I was listening when I was getting ready this morning. I loved it. It's yeah. the best. It's yeah. just voices. It's the thing that we actually all are kind of like nerding out mm-hmm. on at all times. Like, we enjoy it. Anyway, so you can get it on Audible. I mean, that's where I, I often listen to my mm-hmm. audiobooks and my podcast on Audible. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you can also get it on Libro. You can also get it at Pushkin. Pushkin is is like our distributor or whatever. Great. Um, so it's it's easy to get inside voice. Um, my obsession with that Perfect. was Perfect. And you can listen to it right in your podcast app or Audible app, whatever you yeah, guys yes. have. So definitely go check that out, Inside Voice by like Bell. Thank you so yes. much. Thank you so much. Yes. And thank you for teaching us something. Hold yeah. on that regionalism. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We will. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Vocal all right. Exercises. There we go. Yes. Yeah, exactly. We all have some homework. <laughs> yep. All right. Take care. <laughs> 
All right, that wraps up today's episode of Chicks in the Office. And make sure you subscribe everywhere. We cannot wait to see all of you in Boston. And we will talk to you guys on Monday because we... No episode on Friday. Don't have an episode on Friday because we will be traveling. We will be away. But we love you guys. Have an amazing weekend. And we'll talk to you on Monday.